Uh, vocation comes from the word vocare, to call. So, and we've heard in that gospel how the good shepherd, that's Jesus, calls his sheep, and you and I are the sheep. He calls us, he calls each of us to something. Now, there have been saints in the church who've done and lived some pretty amazing ways of life. There's been one saint who wanted to die a martyr for God. God called him to martyrdom. He was a bishop. There was another, uh, there, actually there was a number of them, but there was one saint who felt called by God to be a martyr as well, but he couldn't because they'd stopped killing Christians by that time. And so he went out into the desert and lived his whole life alone in the desert. That's what God called him to do. There have been other saints whom God has called to live out in the streets, begging for everything they've had. So they, wouldn't have, they didn't have their own homes, their own clothes, they had to beg for food, beg for everything. And they were kind of beggar saints. Examples of that, like, like St. Saint Francis. Uh, there have been other saints whom God has called to go to different countries throughout the world, to far, far distant lands, and to speak to different people in those lands. There have been, been saints that God has called just to be good parents, husbands and wives, holy parents. Examples of that might be the parents of St. Teresa of Lisieux, St. Teresa of Lisieux. Her parents are now saints. Are they saints or blessed? They're saints. I thought they were saints, yes. Um, other people, they've been child saints. They've been kids your age that have been really, really holy, had a really close relationship with God. Uh, there have been teenage saints who've had the same experience. Young adult saints, Chiara, I forget her surname, and um, uh, what's his name, the other chap? Uh, uh, Frascati, that's the one. What's his name? Dominic, and, well, Dominic Savio was a young boy. There was um, Giorgio Frascati. You know, so there have been saints that God has called to do all sorts of different things. And the truth is that God is calling each of you, each of you, to be saints. Now, when we hear, you know, the stuff about God calling a saint to die of martyrdom, I don't know about you, but I kind of think, oh, I don't know if I particularly want to die a martyr, you know? Um, I remember uh, many, many years ago, I, I decided to give my life to God. And, uh, but one of the things that was holding me back, I was thinking, if I do that, if I do that, maybe he might ask me to become, not to become, he might ask me to go and work with the homeless. And I was thinking, oh, I don't know if I could do that. You know, I kind of, I was a bit scared at the time. So I was thinking, I don't, I don't know if I could do that. Mm. Uh, but actually what happened is several years later, about three or four years later, I ended up spending a whole year working with the homeless. And it was a fantastic year. And I wanted to do it. I wanted to do it. Before, I didn't. And then, I did. God calls us. He calls you. And in that gospel passage, we hear how he knows each of his sheep by name. And he knows each of you, okay? He knows you. How much does he know you? Better than you know you. He knows you better than you know you. So we have our plans. Now tell me, do you have plans in your lives when I would love to do this? Yes. This is how I want to live my life. Yes. Parents, you can say yes to. Adults, you can nod your heads to. It's fine. Okay. And you, you've gotten your idea. I would hate to live like this way. Yes. I like this. I don't like that. So we'd be happy if God called us to do these things, wouldn't we? The things that we like. We're not so happy if he called us to do these things. God knows you better than you know you. Uh, we have these plans. We don't like those plans. We like these plans. But do you know, God also has plans for you. Did you know that? And his plans are better than your plans. However good you think your plans are, his are always better because he knows what will make you happiest. He knows what will give you the fullness of life. We might think it's this, but actually it could be that. I didn't want to be a priest. 
I didn't want to be a diocesan priest anyway. <clears throat> I wanted to be a religious priest. I thought maybe being a Benedictine or a Franciscan or something like that. I didn't want to be what I am now. But gradually over time, God showed me, Keith, I want you to do this, not that. I remember one time, <clears throat> I, was, uh, I was going out with a girl, okay, and uh, I, I, was, I was on retreat, and she was on retreat as well, and I, I was opening the Bible, I thought, I just asked God to speak to me through the Bible, so I opened the Bible, I just flicked it open, I wouldn't recommend you do that, but I did it, and, uh, <clears throat> and my eyes fell on the words, you shall not take a wife. You shall not take a wife. How do you feel if you were told by God, don't marry someone? A lot of people would be saying, oh no, that's terrible. You know how I, you know my reaction? Yes. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Inside, everything inside just went, yes. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And I knew that God didn't want me to marry. And I didn't want to marry. It was like God was telling me something that deep inside I hadn't realized but was very true. And for me, the fullness of life was living as God called me to. And that was not as married. God, you know, I told my girlfriend, she wasn't happy. <laughs> she wasn't happy. She wanted to marry me. She's got married now. She's very happy with lots of kids. So anyway, where am I now? Yeah, so sometimes we might think we know better than God knows, but actually he always knows better than us because he knows us better. His plans are always better than our plans. And how do we know? The question becomes, how do we know what God's plans are for us? How do we find out? Shall I let you into a secret? Okay, the first thing we've got to do is to stop doing the things we shouldn't do. You know what I mean? Folks, the word the Bible uses in the first reading is St. Peter to the people, repent. Okay? Stop doing things you shouldn't do. You know what I'm talking about. Yes? Everybody nod your heads. You know what I'm talking about, so stop it. Don't do it again. Change. That's the first thing. The second thing is, start doing the things you should do. Live the way you know you should live. Folks, you know the way you should live, don't you? Nod your heads, you know. Start doing it today, today. Part of that is prayer, because in that gospel, we heard that Jesus saying about the sheep know the shepherd's voice. They know who he is. They know his voice. He goes on ahead of them, and they can hear him, and they go wherever he calls. So they know his voice. The question is, how do we get to know the voice of God? How do we get to know the voice of Jesus? We pray absolutely fantastic. We pray. And praying is spending time with the shepherd. The more you get to know someone, you know, uh, excuse me, sorry to say this, folks. I, I go in the, sh the confessional over there. <clears throat> There's a screen, so I can't see who you are. But the shepherd knows his sheep. So sometimes I know who you are. <laughs> Sometimes, not all the time, okay? So the shepherd knows the sheep and you know the voice of the shepherd so you would know if it wasn't me on the other side. Yes? I assume you think, oh, that's not Father Keith, that's somebody else. So it's the same time. The more we get to know the person, the more, the more we get to, to understand, it, hear his voice. And it's not hearing a physical voice like my voice. It's like a voice in your heart. And God calls us by giving us a desire he puts a desire in our heart to do something. 
And so it's not that loud voice, but it's a soft voice in here saying, come, Keith, this way, this way, Keith, this way, do this. And then we have a desire to do it. And when we have that desire, it's something that gives us pleasure. We enjoy, we, 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 we really ha- want to do it. Uh, Yeah, that's how he leads us. So the more we listen to his voice, the more we pray, the more we get to understand, hear his voice. And then when we start doing things, we know when his voice is saying, come this way or saying, no, 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 don't go that way. Go this way, go this way instead. And so he leads us. So we, he leads us to life in its fullness. That's why he came. And so Today, we pray that we can get to know the Good Shepherd. We turn away from the things we shouldn't do, folks. Start doing the things we should do. Pray and listen and follow his voice. Amen? Amen. Amen. Wonderful.